He manages the firm's next generation connected consumer ETF, does hold shares of Disney. So give me your reaction first to what they reported. Great. Thanks, Scott. So I think, you know, we our expectations going into this weren't overly prescriptive. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of fluidity in the backdrop um, with what's going on with the management and with what's going on with their DTTC platform. Um, so, you know, I think we were generally looking for high single digit revenue growth and something in the high teens, um, you know, profit declines, and, and they were able to uh, inch out a little something better than that. So we're excited to see the results. So I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, the bigger picture view here. If you consider that these results in many ways were Bob Chapek's results, right? Mr. Iger's mm -hmm. just come back. So the conference call is, is underway as we speak. What do you want him to do? It's a good question. I think the, the onus is on Bob right now, um, Bob Iger right now, to um, do, do three things. Um, one, address the DT, DTC platform and it specifically spell out the path to profitability. Doing that, you know, it, you know, understand, describe exactly why and what the appropriate level of um, subscribers are for a, for an addressable market. Explain why the um, price increases are low hanging fruit for them, and articulate this path kind of hopefully before fiscal the end of fiscal 24. And I think most importantly, it needs to be a very credible, data supported um, you know uh, insight that investors and believe. Um, you know the, the second piece of the equation is the cost cutting side. Um, so he can speak to that. Um, they've got about 18 billion or so in uh, non-programming, non-part park costs. Every billion is about 45 cents in EPS. Um, that that could be something that I think is going to get a lot of attention. Um, and then also, you know, he doesn't have to have necessarily an answer in mind um, for the uh, for the for the linear TVs or the linear networks. Um, but I think it would be behoove him to kind of speak to addressing a plan there. What, what do you want to see in terms of the board makeup? I mean, that, that's the issue that's overhanging this whole story now. As, as Tryon's waging this proxy fight, they, they want a seat on the board. You know, some would suggest that, well, Chapek wasn't making d decisions in a vacuum, that maybe sure. the board is as responsible in some ways uh, as Mr. Chapek has, you know, deemed to have been in some of the decisions that were made. Do you think Pelt should be on the board? Uh, I think Bob Iger has had a terrific career over many years and created tremendous shareholder value. Um, and it would probably behoove investors to, to see what kind of plan materializes there over the next 18 to, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months. Now, having a, uh, um, you know, an activist like Nelson Peltz on the sidelines um, probably puts a floor on the stock, which we like. And, you know, and so that, that's something that, uh, you know, it's always important to keep the dial up on pressure there. Um, but um, for the time being, I think we need to let 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 just let Bob see how their plan unfolds. Well, we'll see how he's he's talking about that. I'm sure he's going to be asked about it on the call, which is going on as we speak. Kevin, thank you. We'll see you soon.